is good all the time. God is who we need all the time, every day, every day of our life. My God, I tell you, I'm believing that more and more. I'm trying to draw closer to him more and more. Uh, because when you step out, uh, ignore him during the day, trouble come your way. Trouble come your way. It's better to face the trouble with God than try to face it by yourself. Oh, this is an awesome God. He is worthy of all the praise, of all the honor, and all the glory. I give all to my God. Hallelujah. And Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus, giving you thanks and honor and praise for this day, Lord. Thank you and praise you for who you are. You are an awesome God, and you're worthy of all the praise. You're worthy of all the honor, and you are worthy of all the glory. Lord, you're so real to me. I thank you, and I praise you, Father God, for who you are. Thank you, praise you, Father God, for your loving kindness and your mercy. Thank you, praise you for your salvation. Thank you, praise you, Father God, for just loving us, Lord, when we didn't even love ourselves. Hallelujah. Even when we were yet sinners, you sent your son into the world to die for us. Good Lord, have mercy. There's no other God that would do something like that. He died for the sinners. He died for the sinner man. Hallelujah. He's still seeking the lost, trying to bring us in. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Father God, for our bishop, James H. Everett Jr., our pastor Vanessa Everett and the Absent. Lord, we just lift them up before you, Lord. We thank you, we thank you for meeting all their needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus, Lord. Touch them right now, Lord. Touch them mentally, physically, emotionally, Lord. Strengthen them, Lord. Let every organ, every tissue in their body, Father God, heal it, Father God. Work a miracle for them, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank and pray for our church family. I lift the church family up before you. Deliver Jesus is coming. Church family, Lord, I lift them up before you. Ask that you can have your way, Lord, in the different church. Uh, 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 location where, where we at, Lord. We ask that you would touch, Lord, that you would bring us together, Lord. Help us to support and love one another, Lord. Yeah. God, I love. Hallelujah. The Bible says love never fails. Yeah. Love is the answer for all things, and God is love. So, therefore, God is the answer for all things. We give you honor, we praise your holy name. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Hallelujah. I got a, a short word from the Lord tonight. In my old age, I try to just do what the Holy Ghost tells me and sit myself down. Uh, I thank God for my, my partner, my, my baby. Amen. Uh, I've been my baby, now. been my baby now for 20 years. We've been married. And, but we was friends before that. I'll just take this little time. We was friends. That was my buddy. And I met her at the job. And we, I wasn't putting at her or anything like that. Not like that. We used to sit and have lunch and we just talk. We used to have a good time. And we still do have a good time. We go on, we, you know, we go on vacation and stuff. We still uh, have a good time. Uh, first, first couple of times I met her, I'm sitting and eating with her. She ate off my plate. I was like, man. But this is when we was for dating. You know, I ain't, I ain't like to share my food. No, 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 no. But that's my friend. You know, my wife is my friend. That's my partner. You know, we we get on each other nerves sometimes. I have to go in the uh, man cave, and she go in the woman cave. You know, but we still love each other at the end of the day. And uh, I, I thank God that I can wake up in the morning, and you know, she, she's like, "Baby, we gonna study. We gonna study together today." So that you know, that's that's a blessing where we trying to go to grow together in the Lord. So I thank God for my partner. She my baby. Hallelujah. See, one, one wife for life. <laughs> That's it for me. She can tell me, but you know, it's so so. I ain't gonna even go there. <laughs> God is good. God is good. Yeah. God said that man who finds a wife finds favor with the Lord. So I got favor with the Lord. Hallelujah. And, uh, I'm going to tell y'all this, and then I'm going to do what the Lord told me to do. You know, when I, when I, uh, when we first uh, met, when we started dating, and we got serious, and uh, i never been knocked down, knocked, knocked down under the power. I've been in some powerful service. So I came there at uh, 801, Amen. and Pastor Ben was preaching. And you know, we was, you know, we was, I 
was the living rat. So he called me out, and I was like, oh, Lord. So I went up, and he laid his hand on me, and I fell out on the floor. And the Lord said to me, marry her. And that's the truth. And uh, sometimes I ask God, God, was you sure? <laughs> <laughs> you know when she stopped walking on that nerve you thought she had head on her. But she's my baby, so she she can she's allowed to do that. So I'ma say I'ma say that too. But you know God is God is good to us and God been blessing us and I thank God for our relationship. I love you, baby. Right. I don't know the man, the man in the love of Jesus is coming. I don't know when we get up there, we like to talk about our wife sometimes. You know, but that's a good thing. I want to share this with you. <laughs> Just imagine God saying this to you. In a world of unrelenting changes, I am the one who never changes. I am the Alpha and the Omega. God said, I'm the first and the last. The beginning and the end. Find stability in me for which you have yawned. I created a beautiful, ordered world. God said, I created a beautiful, ordered world. One that reflects my perfection. Now, however, the world is under the bondage of sin and evil. But it didn't start it out that way. It was perfect. Every person on the planet faces gasping jaws of uncertainty. You know, one day it's all right, next day it's not all right, the economy is okay one day, the next day the economy is, is down, the, the uh, NASDAQ is up one day, the next day it's down. So this is the kind of world we live in. The only antidote to this poisonous threat is drawing closer to me. God wants us to draw closer to him. That's the, that's the, that's the whole thing of being in relationship with God is to draw closer to him have conversation with him on a daily speak to him let God know what you're going to do what God let God know what you want to do God is an awesome God and he's an awesome father he will sit there and he will listen to you so he wants us to draw closer to him in my presence you can face uncertainty with perfect peace even when, you, when you're going through, in the midst of all you're going through, in the midst of all that's going on in your life, if you focus in on God, God will keep your heart and mind in perfect peace. Yeah. God promised that. You can, you can have some crazy stuff going on in your life, but if you focus in on God, don't let the distraction of the world, don't let the world, that, the way the world is today, distract you from a perfect God, a perfect God that can help you, that can bring you over. And tonight, and, 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 and these script, this is based on Revelation 22 and 13, where he said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. God said, I stand first, and good Lord have mercy, you're going to be the last one standing. God is not going to fail. Not, not his word, anything in God's word is not going to fail. Everything else is going to fail, but God's word is never going to fail. God's word is going to be forever. God's word can't return to God void. It has to accomplish what God set it out to, to accomplish. So if you're standing on the word of God and you believe in God, you're going to come through. You're going to come through. And then Romans 5 and 12 says, Whereas by one man sin entered into the world, see sin wasn't in the world, and death by sin, and so death passed unto all men, for that all have sinned. We all, we all sinned somewhere, some place down the line. If we didn't sin, Jesus wouldn't have to come and die for us. And Jesus was the only one that walked the earth sinless. That's why we can, that's why we can trust him. Because he was tempted with everything that we are tempted with today in the world. But he's, he was sinless. He is the only one that holds that right in heaven. Good Lord have mercy. And then John 16 and 33 said, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. 
God said, but be at B, but be on good cheer. Cheer yourself up. Gird up your lawn. Because you, 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 you might go through some things. But be of good cheer, God said. I have overcome the world. So God made us overcomers. We are overcomers. When we are in Christ Jesus, Jesus did it all for us. It's already done. We just got to uh, uh, just calm our nerve, trust the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. God is an awesome God. He's taking care of it for us. He did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. You know, because the devil will attack your mind. He, he will attack your mind and he will have you thinking that you can't do nothing. Oh, it's, it's, it's not you. He will give you any kind of excuse when you're going through your little, little, little thing. But 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 3 and 12 says, Yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So don't look at it like, you know, uh, you being picked on up. Are you the only one going through something? Just go through. He'll put your right, put your hand in God's hand and go through. God said he holds you with his right hand. So if God holds you with his right hand, when you were a kid and you went to school and you, you, you got your big brother or your big cousin, you know, to take you to school the first day, you know, or your father or your mother take, took you to school the first day and they holding your hand because I know when I went to school for the first day, that was a frightening that's a frightening thing. You know, the first time you, you left your parents and you left your house and, you know, it, it, that, was, that was frightening. So, but if God got your hand, but if your big brother, your sister, your aunt, or your mother, or somebody took you to school, you know, you walk with your chest up. So we can walk with our chest stuck out, not in pride or uh, 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 arrogance, but just in the fact that knowing that God is who he say he is. God is an awesome God. And the devil don't want you to, the devil don't want you to be victorious. So the devil's job is always to bring persecution, bring some kind of stress, bring something. But the Bible said, keep your mind and heart stayed on Christ. Even in the midst of that. Read God's word, study God's word. So when persecution and trouble time come, you will have something to rise up from you on the inside, you know, coming from that, uh, that, that, that well within you. God will bring it back to your remembrance because sometimes when we're reading the word, we just, you know, we just think we just read, you know, just to kill time. But God is feeding that spirit, man. You feeding the spirit, man. So when time for you to go to war, you got something in you. You can be in the military and they didn't train you right. They didn't show you how to use an M16 weapon or, or show you how to shoot a bazooka or show you how to operate the tank. When you get out there in warfare, you can't be confused. You got to know what you're doing. I remember the first time when it was teaching me how to use the M16 rifle, and you know they tell you you have to break this thing down in 45 seconds, and I was like, man, they're crazy, I can't, I can't do this. But I tell you, at the end of six weeks of training, man, you can break that thing down in 45 seconds. <laughs> and that's the only thing, when you're, in the, when you're in the middle of the war, you can't lose your weapon. They won't allow you to call an M16A1 rifle a, 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 a gun, that was your weapon. And you had to sleep with that thing, you had to carry it with you everywhere you go. You was responsible for that weapon. So we are responsible for carrying the word of God in our heart. So when the spirit of God want to want to use us to do something, we have enough word in us to God can bring it back. The Holy Ghost will bring it back to your remembrance. And, and when the Holy Ghost bring it back to your remembrance, that will strengthen you. You wouldn't be weak and crying. You said, this is what God said. You got to always go back to what God said. Jesus did that when the devil was trying to derail him and tell him, oh, you know, go and, and, and you know, the, 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 the devil will tell you half of the scripture. He'll tell you, go ahead. He, he told Jesus to go ahead. And just dash yourself down there. He said he will, he, will, he will catch you. You know, he will hold you up. But Jesus came back in that book and tell him, look, uh, he said, he didn't get fussed with it. He didn't cuss him. He said, you know what? God said we should live by all, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You know, you need every word that comes from God. We need the, we need the word in battle. So Jesus didn't tell him to get behind He said, go on about your business. But one thing about Satan, he's going to leave you for a while, but he's coming back. 
So you still got to study your word. You still got to put that time in with God. You still got to have that, uh, uh, that communication with God. Trust in God. If we, can, we can trust God. It's not an easy thing to do, you know. But sometimes we get to the point where we realize that we ain't got nobody else to trust. We can't even trust ourselves. The word says you can't even trust yourself. We have to rely on God. God is a trustworthy God. He's not a man that you should lie. He's not going to lie to you. He doesn't show up in our life time after time after time after time after time after time. And sometimes he, he show up so regular that we sometimes don't even realize he's there. Because he's a gentleman. He's, a, he, he, he's not going to force you to do something. He's not going to uh, uh, make you do something. You know, he's waiting for you to submit to him. Talk to me. Talk to God. Hallelujah. So anyhow, the topic tonight is I must see God. You must see God in all your situations. If you can't see Jesus in your situation, you mean you might, might have to back out that situation. You might have to wait till God, God tell you it's time to go into that situation. But we must see Jesus in the good times and the bad times. Don't wait for all, don't wait all the time to think Jesus is gonna show up only when you know when you get blessed and then you wanna run the church and then you wanna give your testimony. But sometime in the bad time, he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I'm with you until the ends of time. That's God talking, not that's God's word. He said, I'll be with you until the ends of time. God is not gonna lie. He got your hand, he got your back. He said, You're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. I have did it all for you. I need you to agree with me. Just agree with God. Agree with the word. Even if you don't understand it, just agree with it. Just because God said it. You know? I must see Jesus. And I got three people I want to talk to, and I'm going to talk about it, and I'm going to sit down. One was the blind man. Can you imagine a blind man? He's saying he must see Jesus. Man, physically blind. But he had enough faith in God to know that God, Jesus was who he said he was. He probably heard some people talking about Jesus, the blind man. And then one day Jesus came through Jericho. And this blind man said, what's going on? He couldn't see nothing, but he, he heard the commotion. So he said, what's going on out there? What's going on? And somebody probably told him, Jesus is coming through. He said, man, I, I must see Jesus. I got to see Jesus. He pressed his way. So sometimes when the enemy is on us, and you know all kind of stuff going through our life. We have to press our way. We can't sit back and wait till somebody bring a word to you. You got to push your way out to God, man. We all been in a battle. We all got hurt. We all got disappointed. But the Bible said, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So I'll fall down seven times a day. I'm getting back up. I'm going to do what God told me to do. I don't care what you say about me. I'm going to do what God said to me. To the best of my knowledge. I owe God everything. Good Lord have mercy. He created me. He's keeping me. He saved me. He's delivering me. You hear what I said? He's still delivering me. I ain't at no point where I'm, where I'm somebody. Good Lord have mercy. I'm only something in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I can boast in the Lord because the Bible says if you do some boasting, boast in the Lord. Boast on what God has done for you. Give God the glory and the honor. He gets the glory and the honor. He's not going to share the glory and the honor with nobody. That's God. That's him. That's his territory. When I look around the world, sometimes I see God smiling. You know, he's smiling in the wind. Sometimes you just watch the trees blowing. You know, God is working on that thing. God is dead. God is everywhere. He, he, he's he full of the whole earth. God is an awesome God. He's always present. He's waiting for you to call on his name. Jesus, I believe when we call the name of Jesus, he ought to, we automatically come into his presence. Yeah. He's awesome. He's there, but he, he liked the fellowship with us. Yeah. He liked the fellowship with us. He created us to fellowship with him. Yeah. God is awesome. But getting back to the blind man, Luke 18, 34 through 43. Luke, Luke 18, 35 through 43. And it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the way begging. He was a blind man and a beggar waiting on Jesus. So the poor people need Jesus. The blind people need Jesus. The crippled people need Jesus. Everybody needs Jesus. The Bible said if we would lift up the name of Jesus, 
Hallelujah. All men will be drawn onto him. That didn't leave the crippled man. Crippled man did. The blind man did. Didn't uh, get discouraged because he was blind and he couldn't see Jesus, but he had something on the inside. He said, you know, if I could just get to Jesus, if I could just get to Jesus, if I could just see this Jesus. He was blind, but he was believing, believing that, that he had enough faith to believe if I could just, if I could just get in his presence. Good Lord have mercy, I'm going to get my sight back today. Hey, he might have been bone blind. I don't know. I ain't did no research. You, you, I got to ask him to do a little research. But anyhow, I don't know if the man was bone blind, but he had enough faith and enough sense to say, I can just get to Jesus. Hallelujah. And the 36th verse and hearing the multitude pass by, the blind man hearing the multitude pass by, he asked, what it meant? What's going on? All this noise going on. Why is the people so excited? Hallelujah. And 37 said, and, he, and they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by. Yeah, it's a good thing came out of Nazareth because they said any good thing can come out of Nazareth. That's what the Jew boys were saying that Jesus was, you know, getting, getting, getting his ministry started and, and they was prophesying that he's coming. They said, oh, Lord, is any good thing come out of, out of Nazareth? Nazareth was a gangster town. <laughs> you know, God got a sense of humor. Yeah, but Nazareth was a rough place. So, so God, God, God will take you from the rough places. And set you before kings and queens. God, God, yeah, God will take a, God will take a, a uneducated man, and God will make him look like Superman. God is just that bad. He, that's my God. I believe that. So the blind man, and he cried, saying, "Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me." Blind man talking. The blind man says, "You know what? I can't see, but I can. I got a good voice. I can. I can let my voice be heard." Hallelujah. So he had to say it loud because he didn't know where, which direction Jesus was coming from. Hallelujah. And then, which went before him, rebuke him. You know, you always have somebody trying to tell you to shut up. Yes. Somebody always going to tell you to shut up. That's why I can't, I can't go to a church that I can't make no noise in. And I'm quiet. Don't do that. I'm a quiet person. But when it comes to serving the Lord... I got to make some noise up in the place. I got to make some noise up in the place for Jesus. Hallelujah. So the blind man, they try to rebuke him that he should hold his peace. Sometimes you got to let your peace go, let your weave go back, let your whatever, the, whatever. I ain't talking about the ladies and men too. We just have to let ourselves go and let the Lord know how much we love him. We got to give you, God gives you a peace, but it's a time to hold your peace. It is a time to praise God. So in the midst of trying to hold your peace when it's time to praise God, you know, you done messed up. You know, you could have missed your blessing. <laughs> Don't hold your peace. The blind man didn't hold his peace. But he cried so much the more. He cried so much the more. Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. He was getting them, getting the masters, he was getting the masters' attention. And Jesus stood. He stopped him in his track. He got his attention. He stopped. Jesus stopped. Can you imagine that? That blind man got so he got so loud. Jesus wanna know what, what is that? Who's that? Where is that coming from? Jesus lost faith in him and command him to be brought unto him. Jesus said, bring that man up here. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, what will thou that I shall do unto thee? He had Jesus' attention. He's not, he, he, he probably was never going to get that again. This was the blind man's moment. Tonight might be your moment. This is the day that the Lord has made. Moray Pomsla. So the blind man took the opportunity. He said, he said, what must I do for you? And he said, the blind man said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Oh, In 42nd verse, and Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith has saved thee. The man had faith. He couldn't see, but he wanted to see Jesus. The topic is, I must see Jesus. So that man being blind, God honored what he was thinking. God honored him. Good Lord have mercy, he received his sight. That's an awesome miracle. That's a miracle. The blind man got what he needed from Jesus. 
He got his sight. And immediately, he received his sight. And followed him. He started to follow Jesus from that point on. Glory and glorifying God. And then, guess what happened? The blind man received his sight. The people in the community know he was blind all his life and begging. But guess what happened? And then all the people, when they saw it, give praises unto our God. Yes. That's why God put us on the planet. Yes. We go through so we can have we can be a testimony for somebody else. When they see you going through and they see you come through, when God brings you through, it's not, not for you to boast, but to boast in what the Lord has done for me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You, you, see, you should, if you could only see Jesus, if you could only remember who's your Savior, remember what he's done, no matter what it looked like, because sometimes it looked it, it look bad. It looked like you're going to, it looked like you're going to, you finish. It looked like you just, you ain't got enough. You, you so low in the dirt, you, you low in the dirt. And Lord have mercy, when you get lower than dirt, guess what? When you get lower than dirt, you're going under the dirt. <laughs> so that when you get lower than dirt, you better pull yourself up. Yeah. Unless you're going six feet under. So when you get lower than dirt, when you feel like the devil done beat you down lower than dirt, call on Jesus. And Jesus yeah. will lift you up. <laughs> yes, Lord. If you see, uh, he, will, he will bring you out. Jesus will bring you out. Yeah. You must see Jesus. The blind man, even though he was physically blind, he did not let that hinder him from calling and reaching out to Jesus. Yeah. Good Lord have mercy. You must see Jesus. Jesus is awesome. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Glory to God. Luke 19, 1 through 10, and Jesus entered into and passed through Jericho. Jesus keep going to Jericho. And then there was a rich man. Now Jesus running into a rich man in Jericho. He left a blind poor man. He took care of his business. So now he's going to the second man. This guy was rich. Zacchaeus was his name. He was a ruler. You know, he was he was a head, he was the chief of the publican. But the only problem Zacchaeus had, you know, he was financially good. He was he he had he had position. And this is a joke, he was short. <laughs> Zacchaeus was short but he was alright, he was physically good you know, he was good and, and behold there was a man named Zacchaeus which was the chief among the uh, public here, and he was rich and he sought to see Jesus who he was, he was rich he had status but he still had something that he needed. He was missing something in his life. And he heard about Jesus. And he wanted to see who Jesus was. I want to see who this is. Mm -hmm. And could not for the press. He couldn't see because of the press. Because he was little in stature. He was short. So then he had to, he had to think. He said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take care of this part. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. He said, I got to get height. So he got height. He got up in the tree. For he was to pass that way. Jesus was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to, to the place, he looked up. See, Jesus always knows what's going on. Jesus looked up. He knows that Zacchaeus was supposed to meet him there. It wasn't no accident that he looked up in the tree. It wasn't no accident that Zacchaeus ran up in the tree. <laughs> Glory to God. And he looked up and saw him, Zacchaeus, and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make hate and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he, and he, and he made haste and came down and received Jesus joyfully. And when they saw it, see people always looking, when they saw it, they all murmured. See, they was trying to tell the, the the brother before Zacchaeus to be quiet. So now they tell him, now they all murmur, saying that he was going to be the guest with the man that is a sinner. So Jesus said, I come to save the sick and the lost. The sick and the lost, he died for the sinner, man. So he, that, 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 was, that was his purpose. And then Zacchaeus stood and said unto, unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. 
I'm trying to figure out why Zacchaeus say that because I think he done he had rolled off some people. You know, he did some wrong, and he trying to he trying to clean his clean his uh, clean his spirit. He's trying to get it right. He he know he was in the presence of of God. He he know what he did wrong. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I will I restore him fourfold. He said, I'll give him four four if anybody come and tell me, you know, that I took something from you around. He was trying to get his life in order with God. Hallelujah. And Jesus said unto Zacchaeus, this day is salvation come to this house. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham. See, you don't know what day God's going to stop by and ask you. And God's going to stop by to your house and save your whole household. So we got to live right. We got to be right all the time. We got to be in Jesus all the time. We can't slip and slide in Jesus. We can't be uh, flipping, flopping, one foot in the world, one foot in the church. Come to church when you want to. Do what you want to do when you get to the house of God. This is the house of God. We're supposed to be in order. We're supposed to do our part. And we should just think about who we are working for. The Bible says, do all things as unto the Lord. Yeah. Bishop told you he ain't got no heaven to get you in. He's trying to get there too. Right. So, we, everything we do, we do it as unto the Lord. The Lord is who we work for. The Lord is who we are trying to uh, glorify, to give honor and to worship Him. That's our job. God call us, all of us, to reconciliation. We all got a job to do. We are part of the body. My hand can't work like my feet, but it got something to do. My eyes can't work with my ear, but it got something to do. So we got something to do. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. So our job was to help, you know, do, do the work that Jesus already started. He want us to finish it up. So we have to seek those that, uh, 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 that seek those that, that are lost. The Bible says the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So some of the people that's coming in and go last, God will come back and call them up and talk to them first. But we're going to be sitting back and waiting for them to call them. I just think God got a sense of humor like that. You will look at the drunk people and say, oh, you know, I don't want to, I, I don't want to smell that alcohol. I don't want to, you know, and Lord have mercy. Everybody in church ain't been born, just got, you know, going to church all their life. I, I wouldn't like that. Lord have mercy. You know, we all wouldn't sin. Right. And we, the Bible says we all sin, so God is telling you all sin. Sin is sin. <laughs> Lies a lie, sin is sin. You know, big lie, little lie. If you lie, you lie. You tell a big lie, little lie, the angel's writing. <laughs> He's right. It's going to come back to you. We have to stand before God for everything we do. Every hate in our heart, God knows. Angel's still right. But it's all right to go through some of that stuff, but we just have to repent. You know, because our mind, we're living in a world that's, that's crazy. So some of that stuff rub off on us. So we have to repent. God wants us to come to him, confess, and he's faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness. That's what God told us. Hallelujah. Okay, the blind man, the blind man was poor and a beggar, but he needed Jesus. Zacchaeus Zacchaeus was the chief among the publican. He was rich and had status, but he still needed Jesus. He wanted to see Jesus and know what he was all about. He wanted to know what Jesus was all about. That's what we need. We need to know what Jesus is all about. So all the other stuff that we go through in life don't mean nothing. I want to know what Jesus, what Jesus think about what I'm thinking about doing today. Can I do this, Lord? Can I go here? People say, you know, I'm going to move. I'm going to move out the city. I'm going to move so and so. But you know, we have to get before God and say, God, is this the move that you want me to move? Can I, can I, can I leave my church home? Can, is it time for me to move on? You know, we got to consult with God with everything. It's not, it's not, we don't, we're not our own. We don't, we don't, we, we, we belong to God. God pay a price for us. We are his, we, we are his uh, 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 instrument. So we have to listen to God. This old one, won't you move so and so? I ain't feeling that. God ain't telling me to move. I go move down and, and bust shoot South Carolina and nothing happened for me. You know? But when that day comes, if it happens, then it's happening. Let's see this. Okay. And then we got the third person I want to talk about is the woman with the issue of blood. She had to see Jesus. 
Zacchaeus, he climbed the tree. The blind man talked loud to Jesus until he got Jesus' attention. And then here comes this woman. And this woman is always taking it a little bit fun. <laughs> now, all the people, it's like, uh, the blind man yelled to get Jesus' attention. Zacchaeus climbed the tree. Now here goes this woman. I got to test you. You know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes people don't like to be touched. You know, sometimes you don't like to be touched. You get a hard day at work. Somebody come to hug it on you. My wife said, oh, you give me a moment. You know, <laughs> so, you know I'm, I'm just being for real. So the woman, you know, a woman with the issue of blood, you'll find a woman with the issue of blood in, in, the, in the priest and not the gospel. You know, this, this uh, miracle uh, Jesus performed in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. <clears throat> the woman with the issue of blood, she wanted to see Jesus too. Yeah. She had, you know, the story is she had spent all her money. You know, she had went to a lot of doctors. She just ain't had no more money. And then she heard about this Jesus coming through. And Matthew 9, 20 and 22. And behold, a woman which was diseased with the issue of blood. 12 years. She was sick for 12 years. That's Matthew 9, 20 to 22. 12 years. And she came behind him. Here she goes. Touched the hem of his garment. <laughs> for she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment. I wonder why she was thinking like that. She had to touch Jesus. Because sometimes we do need a touch from the Lord. Oh, glory. You know, I, I, the brothers, the ladies, sometimes always ahead of us. <laughs> they, 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 they get it sometimes. We don't. <laughs> I, I had a preacher one time tell me to listen to your wife. And I said, Lord. But Jesus <laughs> turned him about. Okay, when the lady touched the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. The lady was thinking, if I touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. So she had faith that if I touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. There's something about touching the master. Hallelujah. But Jesus turned him about. He turned around. And when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith had made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour on. After going to all these doctors, after spending all her money, one touch from Jesus changed her life. And Jesus is still the same today, yesterday, and forever. He can do the same thing for us. We, we have we have choice in letting our uh, circumstances keep us from seeing Jesus or uh, do like the beggar, the rich, short, chief publican, or the woman with the issue of blood. You can press to see Jesus and be made whole or you can give in to the pressure and stay in bondage with the devil. You have to push up from under the, from under the pressure. You have to hold the hand of Jesus. Jesus is going to get you out. Hold on to God's own changing hand. Put your hand in God's hand. When your hand is in God's hand, he's not going to let your hand go. He's going to bring you through. He's going to bring you through. That's a fact. You will find the same miracles in our, I say the Matthew, Mark, and Luke. One can use all, you know, we can use all kinds of excuses to miss out on the blessings of God. You know, we can say, people talk about me behind my back. You know, you let that one stop you from coming to church because you think people talk about you behind they talk about Jesus. He was remembering when Jesus was doing his work. You can say, I'm afraid. We all been there. We were afraid of something. But God said, he did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. That's what I said at the top. You know, if you got the word in you, it'll come back up. When you get to that fear come, you just got to do like Jesus did. But Jesus said, it is written. It is written that God did not give me a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Because you know the devil likes to try to mess with your mind. Like, you know, you you, you, you want to go back. You want to, if, if I do this, that's just the devil messing with your mind. That's not the mind that God gave you. That's not the mind of Christ. That's that old mind trying to creep back up. But you rebuke that thing and say, God did not give me a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and a sound mind. My mind is good. Yes. Hallelujah. 
People are calling you names. People don't talk about you. People not speaking to you. Oh, that's a big one right there, you know, because sister, two foot, she don't want to speak to you. Man, go on and sit down and get your blessing from God. Don't worry about that. Maybe sister two shoe had a little, little something going on in the house. Brother two shoe had a little something going on in the house before they got to work. Church, maybe they're going through something. Maybe the lady didn't see you. Maybe the guy didn't see you. You know you've been pre preoccupied sometimes. You, 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 you might, I might see Ella Foote, but I, I don't see him. But ain't no sense in wrong Ella Foote be mad at me for six months because I didn't speak to him. But speak to each other. Because God said, greet one another with a you know the holy kiss. So when we conscious, please speak to each other. Let's be nice to each other. Encourage each other. Strengthen each other. Speak a nice word to each other. You know. And, and, and if you keep doing it, it'll be part of it. My wife, she speak to everybody else. Lord, she speak to everybody on the street. I said, where you know them from? Oh, I seen them at work. And she speak to everybody. So, so me and the kids be looking at her like, Lord. <laughs> then they say they give me they give me the evil look. Jesus already told you they're gonna look at you strange. So what you get? They always in the word. God done cover all that stuff. He say you they gonna look at you evil. But he don't say so you getting evil because they looking evil. You know that's an opportunity to pray for somebody because they going through something. Amen. People saying, who do you think you are? I think I'm a son of the most high God. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be holy. If you want me to tell you, I'm what God say, well, I'm, I'm what God say about me. God say I'm blessed going in and coming out. God say that about me. So just be what God say about you. And you don't have to be arrogant and all that stuff, but you're not being arrogant. Don't let nobody tell you you're not something that God tell you something else. I'm agreeing with God. And people say, who should we who should we serve? Man of God. I'm trying to serve God. So what God say about me is more important because that's when we stand before God. That's that's the end of it right there. What God says is more important than what people say. So we got to free ourselves from people. And then they go to the last one. I'm I like, you know, I'm, I'm black. That happened to me because I'm black. I've been down that road. Lord, that happened to you because you ain't preparing yourself. <laughs> Damn, that ain't happened to you because you're black. How can you want? How can you want to go teach in the school system and you ain't got no? You don't have a degree. How can you want to be an engineer and you ain't never went to school? But you want the man to give you a job being an engineer? You have to prepare yourself. So the generation right now, you ain't got no excuse. You have, you have to find a way. Climb up the tree like Zacchaeus. Go out, look for some rent. So don't tell me because you're black. I was there. I got stuff right there for, for a long time. God pulled me out. God is so good. And then anybody say, you country. Well, let me tell you something. God, you a country preacher. <laughs> Woo, Lord have mercy. I'm country in Jesus. Good Lord have mercy. <laughs> You know you can find all kinds of excuses. I'm ugly. You might look at yourself. That's the way God created you. God said to say everything that He created was beautiful. So you gotta look in the mirror and say, I'm beautiful. I'm handsome. You start speaking good things to yourself. Don't let the don't don't drive with the devil saying you feel ugly. I ain't ugly. I'm uneducated. All right. I might speak a little ebonic, but I'm not uneducated. <laughs> oh, let me sit down. But, uh, that's too the Lord tell me to speak about the day. You know, just encourage yourself and try to see God in your situation, in your circumstances. If you reach out to God, he will reach out to you. And everybody stand. Hallelujah. God is awesome, God. And he will bring you all the praise to all the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're like anybody in the house tonight is family, hallelujah. So, one thing I'm going to ask if anybody need prayer for anything, anybody need prayer to, you know, to, to try to be encouraged to see Jesus in your situation, 
Come on up and get prayer. Don't, don't the blind man press his way. The, 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 the short man press his way. The rich man press his way. The sick woman press his way. Come on up and let the, the, the elders and the minister uh, lay hands on you and pray for you. You know, we need to pray one for another. We need to be strengthened. So, you know, this is not the time to like sit down on Jesus. Do like Zacchaeus said and all other the, the, the lady with the issue of, bl of blood. She came up. She came up to be a uh, to be uh, ministered to. Amen. Hallelujah. God is an awesome God. He is worthy of all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Thank you, Lord. That's what the, that's what the altar is for. Come up and get some prayer for you. Amen. God is awesome. Amen. He is a worthy God. Amen. Let's be a blessing tonight. 